Hey everybody, we're here at the Orlando Maker Fair. Uh, we've got the robot in one weekend robot here, enjoying its new life as a demo robot. We're going to talk about the lift, how it works, uh, the details of it. In addition, we're going to talk about uh, some of the failure points on this robot so you understand that we weren't completely successful in everything that we did. So to start off with the lift, um, it's based off of 8020, which uh, we'll have a link to the 8020 website in it. 8020 is sold through uh, distributors, so you're going to have to go and look at who your local distributor is. We got ours from Florida Motion Control here in Orlando. Um, so overall, we've got these linear slide bearings, which will have the part numbers there for you. Um, we cut the linear slides in half because they're, they're pretty long stock. They're about two and a half inches long, and we cut them in half. What that does for us is it gives us more lift height and also saves us some money because the bearings are really expensive. So when you cut them in half, you basically get double for your money. Um, it works off of a cable, uh, a cascaded cable. So that means the only section that's actually powered is the first section. The first section gets lifted up by the shaft that's synchronized across between the two gears. We're using a one-to-one -one ratio. Now this is the first failure point that we're going to talk about. This shaft actually from all the torque on it got bent. And if you notice in the video, uh, it got, actually grinds as it's going up because the shaft got bent through all the use of shooting the demo. That's a failure point. It needs to have a support in the center or some way to make the shaft a little more true when it spins. You notice that the string we use is actually a woven fishing line. It's got about 500 pounds of strength. Uh, we use that because it's very lightweight, very flexible, um, and pretty easy to work with. Uh, so we have the cascading. A, a neat little feature that we learned uh, from Team Masquerade, who was helping us, is you see there's little pieces of wire in our little pulleys. The reason we do that is when the frame comes down, which it comes down with gravity, which sometimes doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work. We're OK with it, but you might think of the power down. But there's little pieces of wire that hold the string from popping off the bearings. Um, overall, the bearings are actually relatively tight. They're not the smoothest bearings. Um, it takes quite a bit of force to lift the whole thing up. That's why we had the shaft bend. Um, also, with the cascading design, you can see that some of the lines are really loose. Um, that's because you have to tune it that each cable has to be the perfect length for all the sections to go up easily. So when we run it up and down right now, it actually goes up pretty crooked. Another thing that we have is we have spacer blocks on the tops. And that what we do is we basically force this top bar, forces the tops together to squeeze, and they're pushing on these bushings that actually makes it relatively rigid. Overall, the lift is overly heavy and a little slow because uh, it's really geared and designed off of a lift that would lift a robot up from last year's game. Um, there's a lot of modifications and tweaks that you'd have to do to be able to implement this in a competition robot. Um, it takes a bunch of engineering to get it to work right, um, but it, it's, it's possible. Uh, there's a lot of failure points also just in general. Each joint can fail, each bolt can slip, each bearing can slip. Uh, it's a very complex design actually. It looks simple on the outside, but it's not. So we got a lot done on this robot in just one weekend, but there are some places where we really could have improved and some things that we just flat ran out of time on. So I want to talk about some of those things because it's always important for people to know what your failures are. We don't want to pretend like everything went just perfectly as according to the plan. Uh, the very first thing is we got the urethane round belting material. This is a really inexpensive material that's been used on many, many robots in the past uh, that uh, has been great for use for ball control. Uh, we believe a lot of teams this year are going to go and purchase the tank tread kit, which is great. The tank tread kit works great for manipulating balls and getting them to the conveyor the way that you want them to. Uh, this is just a significantly less expensive option. Uh, you can go and make master car and it costs significantly less money. I think it's about $12 and you can make it to whatever length you want and there are YouTube videos all out there on the internet that show you exactly how you can make it the exact length you want and weld it yourself. So this entire contraption 
uh, for manipulating the balls just didn't quite work out the way we wanted to. It was really great. The zip tie mechanism worked out just the way we expected to pick up balls. But then we had to just reverse it and spit it back out, but that was not what we originally intended to do. Everybody got to see the trailer mechanism on the back. We grabbed the, the trailers and we run around with them, uh, and we were able to get up and down the ramps. That was great. The real intent of this was to be able to have a trailer behind us, us lift up and drop down a servo door and then score in the trailer that was behind us. So that way we would be able to drive around with the trailer behind us, scoop up balls and immediately drop them in as we were driving around. Uh, that didn't quite work out because we had just a few problems with this. One, uh, we had some jamming with this mechanism. We drilled one of these holes in the center structure, not quite high enough, just not quite high enough. What we would advise doing is if you do that, use a thicker poly cord than what we used. That way it gives you just a little bit more flex. One of the other problems that we had is that we just ran out of lock nuts. We highly advise teams using nylon lock nuts to keep the robot nice and sturdy and without things falling apart. In fact, you guys saw at the end of our reveal video that a wheel fell off. Well, that was the very first time it came off the ramp and r drove around, and immediately the wheel fell off. So we ran out of collars, we ran out of lock nuts. Uh, you want to either use lock nuts or Loctite to keep your robot nice and sturdy. System, we used uh, the Wago lever locks that we got from Andymark. And I would recommend using these to a lot of teams because it makes it super easy to do very nice, neat wiring, as you can see we've got here. Uh, but it doesn't require a special tool to use it. You can just literally open the little orange handle, put the wire in, and lock it down. And each one acts as a bus bar. Stitch in the ground, go across the entire connector. A uh, very easy way to debug and work on your robot out. Uh, out